As, as you might know, um, okay, well, as, as a musician coming to Israel, there's a lot of pressure to not come here. And it's strange because in the course of my career, I've traveled to a lot of, I mean, I've been to a lot of different countries. And I've never experienced the sort of pressure to cancel a show or not come somewhere as I experienced before coming to Israel. And I was really surprised by it. And so I wrote an essay on my website just sort of explaining how if I go to, like I was just in Belarus, my going to Belarus is not a statement of, I'm not endorsing the government, nor am I condemning the government. I'm just there to play music. And uh, so that was essentially what the, the essay on my website said. The pressure, the form of the pressure to not come here, it's basically just lots of email campaigns. And I don't know who these, who, where the campaigns come from, but just really mean emails. Uh, I almost don't want to repeat some of the things that were said because they were really, really mean. And, and it's, it's such a complicated issue um, because countries are complicated places. Um, and it's, it's one thing I learned quite a long time ago is it's very dangerous to judge a country or to judge a place without being there. You know, like, for example, I was talking to someone on the ride from the airport the first time I went to Yugoslavia or now Serbia, Montenegro, Kosovo, Bosnia, Herzegovina, et cetera, et cetera. The first time I went there was in between the two wars. And the way the wars had been presented in the Western media was Serbia was bad, Bosnia was good. And it was very black and white, very simplistic and very reductionist. And then you actually go to former Yugoslavia and you just realize it's an incredibly complicated situation and it's been incredibly complicated for hundreds if not thousands of years. And I think that same analogy applies here. I think it's very dangerous for someone in London or Paris or Tokyo or wherever to judge a place they've never been to and to judge a situation that they've never experienced firsthand. Um, so, and also, I'm just a musician. You know, as I said in my, I mean, I have lots of opinions about politics, um, but none of them really matter because I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not here as, as a political pundit. You know, I, I have a feeling if, if my job was just to be a political pundit, no one would be sitting here. You know, like if I was doing a show tomorrow night where I was just going to stand on stage and talk about politics, there'd be three people in the audience um, and they'd all be my friends and they'd be bored. Uh, so I'm just here as, as a musician. I'm not here to criticize. I'm not here to condemn. I'm not here to endorse anything. I'm just here because I have a lot of friends who live in Israel and I love playing music here. Um, well, the last time I was here was 1995, <clears throat> and my experience in 1995 was kind of strange because uh, I arrived in Tel Aviv, and I ran out on the beach, and I swam in the sea, and I laid in the sun, and I got the single worst sunburn of my entire life. So the whole time I was here last time, I, I was just really unhappy because I had such a bad sunburn. Um, and also, when I was here in 1995, at that point, not too many people in Israel knew me or knew my music. Um, so it was a little strange driving all around the country with this terrible sunburn, playing music to people who had no idea who I was or what I was doing. Um, so, but the first part of your question, my plans this time, unfortunately, we're only here for a couple of days. Um, my honest answer, I don't know what my plans are. Uh, I have quite a lot of friends who live here. So the last time I was here, I did touristy things. I think this time I'm just going to see friends and be social and maybe go out on the beach, but probably early in the morning or later in the day because I'm a little white guy and I get burned really easily. Um, what took me so long to come here again, no one asked. Um, <laughs> It's really that, like, I just did an interview for an Irish newspaper, and the journalist was asking, he's like, why has it been such a long time since you've been to Ireland? And I was like, 
no, no one's asked. Um, and it's also like there are some parts of the world that are really easy to get to. Uh, you know, like certain cities are very, very close to each other, you know, like Brussels. Brussels is, what, an hour and a half from Paris, an hour and a half from Amsterdam, an hour and a half from London. It's really easy to get to Brussels. So when you're on tour, you'll always play Brussels. Um, as you might know, Tel Aviv is kind of far away from a lot of different places. So the combination of this is the first time I've been asked to come back, and it's very far, so you can't get on a bus and drive here. You know, because a lot of touring, you know, if you have a show in Paris, the next night you have a show in, yeah, in Brussels or Lyon or Lille, which are all just a couple of hours away. And it's logistically really easy, whereas Tel Aviv logistically is kind of hard to get to. Well, so, okay, well, my, my strange background, when I was 10 years old, uh, I studied classical guitar and music theory. And then when I was 13 or 14, I started playing in punk rock bands. And then I went to university and studied philosophy. And when I dropped out of university, I was completely ill-equipped to have a real job. Um, the only job I was in any way capable of doing was being a DJ and working in a record store. And so my first job as a DJ was playing in a dive bar next to a methadone clinic. Um, and I played on Monday nights and I got paid, paid $20 to DJ for eight hours for a bunch of junkies. Um, so that's my background is classical music, punk rock and DJing for junkies. Um, I still play in a punk rock band. I write classical music for movies. Um, I DJ and play dance music. Um, I play in a blues band. My own records are, are more sort of, I guess, atmospheric and melodic. So musically, I don't, I don't know where I fit. Um, it would probably make my life easier professionally if I fit in one place, but I just don't. The live show that we do, there's about, I guess, eight of us on stage. So there's a string section and a drummer and a vocalist and a bass player and a keyboardist and then me playing guitar, percussion, keyboards and vocals. Um, the show that we do, I guess the best way to describe it is a greatest hit show because when I go to see other bands, I want them to play their hits. You know, I, I, I heard Duran Duran were supposed to be here. Um, if I go see Duran Duran, I want them to play Hungry Like the Wolf in Rio. Um, it's, what I try to do is put on stage what I think I would want to see if I was in the audience. And I, mean, I have a new album out called Destroyed, and we don't really play any of that music live. Play one or two songs, because most of the music on Destroyed is very quiet and a little more subtle and thoughtful. And live, it's a lot more energetic, um, and it's songs from al older albums like Play, 18, Hotel. But as far as David Lynch is concerned, yeah, I mean, he's my favorite American. And it's one of the weirdest and nicest things about having a career as a public figure musician is I get to meet my heroes and sometimes work with them. You know, I went on tour with David Bowie and have done fundraisers with Lou Reed, I once played Walk on the Wild Side, where Lou Reed and I traded verses. Um, I played me and Bobby McGee with Chris Christopherson. So I'm not bragging. I'm just saying, like, it's so strange to meet your heroes and do things with them. And I have no bigger hero in the world of art, music, or film than David Lynch. And we've done so many strange things together. Uh, I DJed at his wedding. Um, we've worked on music together. We've worked on movies together. But I would, I would do anything that he asked. You know, if he got on the phone right now and asked me to come to Mexico City to make coffee for a TV commercial he was producing, I would, yeah, that, that, that's, I, I would just get on the next plane and go to Mexico City to make coffee for David Lynch. I never expected to have a career as a musician. Um, I really thought that I would be a university teacher who would make music in his bedroom that no one ever listened to. So. It still surprises me that I've had a career as a musician. And when I first started making records, I read every review. And I read everything written about me obsessively. And what I've learned is when you first start making records, people are nice to you, you know, because you're new. And the press is a lot friendlier. When you've been around for a while, the press is not as friendly. So I guess about Five or six years ago, I stopped reading all my press um, because I didn't understand it. You know, I, I completely respect 
a journalist's uh, opinion to not like my music. But sometimes, the last time I read reviews, it had nothing to do with the music. It had everything to do with the journalist not liking me or having some opinion about me. And I just wonder, like, why should I in any way base my emotional life on the opinion of a complete stranger? You know, so I just stopped reading my press. And also, it's like it's sort of an unhealthy form of narcissism to obsessively read about yourself through third party sources. You know, it's either negative narcissism or positive narcissism, but it still feels kind of narcissistic. Uh, I like traveling sometimes. Um, I don't like touring. Um, I like playing music and I like meeting people. I don't really like living in hotels. I mean, this is a nice hotel. I can't, I can't complain, um, but I've been touring for most of the last 20 years. And there's, there's an old expression among jazz musicians, which is they get paid to travel, but they play music for free. And that's sort of how I feel. Like I love playing music. I don't really like sitting in airports, smelling bad, duty-free perfume every day. Thank you, Mo. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, thanks.